happy, happy Easter. Today is a day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It's the most amazing day in history. Now, before we get started, I want to remind everyone that June 28th through July 2nd is Vacation Bible School here at LifePoint. It'll be from 9 a.m. in the morning till noon, and that'll be every day of the week, that week, and is for kids four years old through those going into the sixth grade. Last summer, our online VBS was really, really cool, but there is nothing like in-person Vacation Bible School. It's one of the highlights of our year. And if you've never been to one of our, of our VBSs, it's something you absolutely positively do not want to miss. We'll be giving you more details as we get closer, but for now, ask your parents to mark it down on the calendar. Easter to me is all about Jesus. But to be honest, Easter also makes me think about jelly beans. How can you possibly not think about jelly beans at Easter? Well, I have here in my hands a jar of jelly beans. The person who can guess the closest to the number of jelly beans in this jar will win this prize. It's an Easter themed fidget bag. An Easter themed fidget bag, all kinds of little fidget toys in there. We will have one winner in each service today and one online winner. To be an online contestant, you need to have an adult post your name and the number you're guessing on the LifePoint Kids Facebook page. You'll need to do this by Monday morning, April 5th, and uh, we'll post the winner or contact you to let you know if you've won. Well, we're going to give you one more chance to look at the jar at the end of the service so you can get a really mathematical, estimated, scientific guess and, uh, you know, may the best jelly bean guesserer win. I, I know guesserer is not a word, but I, I like it anyways. Well, it's time for Lifeborn Kids to so stand to your feet and let's sing. <laughs> Stay in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. Empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive.
everyone, I'm Miss Olivia and I wanted to welcome you to LifePoint Kids. I'm so glad that you've joined us. What a fantastic way to spend Easter Sunday morning. If this is your first time with us, or if you've been here a bazillion good times before, we're just super excited that you're here. And just in case you're not aware, we're having in-person services on Sundays at 9 and 11 a.m. now. 318 Kids on Tuesday nights is at 7, and of course, we will continue to have Sunday Morning Kids Church online as well. We've got a great service ahead, so let's start by going to the Lord in prayer. Bow your heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful Easter morning. We thank you for sending your Son for us to die on the cross. We just ask that as we listen to this service today that you would help our eyes and our ears to be focused on you and that our hearts would hear what you have for us to hear god we thank you for this time together in your name amen all right it's time for us to join addy addy katie and maddie and give jesus some praise let's stand to your feet shake it out and worship no Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Savior, all the day long, praise 
kids, what time is it? Yay time! It's time for a game of where my beeps at. There are over 50 eggs on the floor here, okay? And the job for you today is to find the peeps that are in those eggs. There's about eh, 15 or 20 peeps in some of these eggs. You are to find every peep. And the one of you in the 30 second time limit that can find the most peeps is the winner. Now the little catch is, if you touch an egg, you have to open it. So you can't pick them up and shake them to see if there's peeps in them. You have to touch every egg, every egg you touch, you have to open up, okay? So are you ready? Are you sure? Yes. Where are your peeps at? Um, Down there. That's where your peeps are. Okay. Are right, you ready? On your mark. Get set. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. You are. You ready? Yes. What are you looking for? Peeps. There you go. On your mark, set, go. Oh, oh. Where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Go. Where my peeps at? 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 Yo, where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Yo, where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Yo, where my peeps at? All right, the stand up. So, what do we have here? Okay, Five. so, Five. Katie, you. Oh my so goodness, tall. really? No. Oh no. That okay, so been. we're gonna take this one out. That counts. And no, no, no. What we're gonna do because it's a tie, five to five, five to five. Okay, so what we're gonna do is when I say go, the first one of you to find a peep and throw it onto your side is the winner. Okay. All right. Sudden death. On your mark. Get set. Go! Right there, we have a winner! All right, so close, Katie. Hey, I picked that one up. That's okay. All right, so great job. Great job, guys. So, Katie, you're the winner. So, um, you're going to get a box of peeps for winning. All right? All right, give them a hand, everybody. Hey kids, it's Easter! Are you excited? There are many reasons to be excited about Easter. What is your favorite thing about Easter? Hmm, those are all great reasons to be excited for Easter. But as we enjoy the eggs, the candy, and bunnies, we can't forget the most important reason to celebrate Easter. The most important reason is that today we celebrate when Jesus was raised from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. Today we are going to learn all about Easter, but first I want you to check out this video. Hey everyone, I am so excited. It's Easter weekend. I have been so ready to celebrate Easter at church. The other day, something crazy happened. I was decorating Easter eggs with my little brother when all of a sudden, in the middle of the project, he quit. He only dyed half of the Easter eggs and didn't finish. Now, his basket is full of just half colored eggs and half plain old regular eggs. You know, it's important that whenever we start something, we finish it. Like when your mom tells you to take out the trash, can you imagine what it would be like if you got halfway across the house and just decided you didn't want to finish taking it out? The trash would sit there in the middle of the house. When your mom finds it, she's going to be so upset about the nasty smell you caused, all because you didn't finish. It's kind of like my friend who decided to run in a marathon. They trained and trained, and then the day of the race, they got halfway through and just quit. Can you believe that? They never got a medal because they didn't finish. This reminds me a lot of the lesson you're going to learn today. God knows the importance of finishing. When God starts something, he always finishes it. 
The disciples were worried when Jesus was put to death on the cross. They thought God had given up on his plans for Jesus. But one thing you're going to learn is that even when it looks like it's over, it's not over. God won't quit until he's through. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. Talk about a big finish. That's why we celebrate Easter, because Jesus is alive. I hope you enjoy your lesson today. Always remember, what God starts, he will always finish. Happy Easter. It's true, isn't it? It is so important that we finish what we start. God knows this too. He is always faithful to finish the good work he starts in our lives. It's easy for us to lose faith in that process though. When things seem to go wrong, we can easily think God has quit on us and begin to think he has left us all alone. The disciples probably felt that way after Jesus died on the cross. They thought he was gone, but Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday to prove that what God starts, he always finishes. Today, you are going to learn all about this in your lesson. But right now, I want you to meet my friend, Wiggy Pop. He is going to teach you what you gotta know. What you gotta know. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, it's me, Wiggy Pop. And I'm here to have a rockin' time and to tell you what you gotta know. It's Easter, and so we're gonna talk about how when God starts something, he always finishes it. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them this. God won't quit until he's through. Sometimes you feel like things are just too bad and there's no hope. Oh, it's over for me. My guitar amp blew up. My manager says that my mullet is too long. And the last time I wrote a song for the radio, they told me it sounded too much like row, row, row your boat. Rock, rock, rock it out gently down the stream. Okay, so maybe they were right. But it still feels like there's no hope for me. Feels like it's over. Wait a second, it's not over. Cause when God starts something, he always finishes it. Put your trust in him, he's got big plans for you. So every time today, somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them this. God won't quit until he's through. And that right there is what you gotta know. My name is Wiggy Pop and I'll see you next time Rock on! <laughs> Thanks, Wiggy. This week, instead of saying what's up, we're going to be saying what you got to know. So every time you hear someone yell, what you got to know, stand your feet and yell, God won't quit until he's through. All right, so let's practice our what you got to know one time. Only one time today, all right? You ready? What you got to know? God won't quit until he's through. Wow, that was fantastic. That was so amazing. In fact, that was awesome. Great job. And that's today's What You Gotta Know. What You Gotta Know! God won't quit until he's through! Were you aware that Jesus started his ministry on earth at the age of 30? He spent three years preaching God's love to the world and performing miracles. Jesus' 12 disciples knew he had promised to set up God's kingdom on earth. He was going to be the ruler of the world. Jesus started something amazing. One day, something terrible happened. Jesus was arrested. He was beaten, and then he was sentenced to death. His hands and feet, they were nailed to a cross. The soldiers, they laughed at him. They made fun of him. The disciples couldn't believe it. They expected that Jesus would fight back and he would defeat his enemies. 
But Jesus didn't fight back. Instead, he prayed for God to forgive those people who were hurting him. Sadly, Jesus died on the cross that day. The disciples were so sad. They just couldn't understand. They wondered, how could this be happening? Jesus started such an incredible ministry. He had promised to set up this kingdom, but now he was dead. The disciples had started to lose hope. They thought that Jesus had failed to finish what he'd started. They expected Jesus to save himself, but it didn't happen. Jesus' body was then placed inside a tomb, and a large stone was rolled over the entrance of the tomb. But three days later, some women came to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with some perfume. Guess what they found? Jesus' body, it wasn't there. Only his grave clothes were there. Wow, what do you think had happened? Suddenly, an angel appeared to the women and said, Why are you looking for Jesus? He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. The women went to find the disciples to tell them good news. Jesus isn't missing. Jesus is alive. Jesus later appeared to the disciples and many others, showing that he indeed was alive. Because Jesus is alive, we celebrate Easter. We celebrate because Jesus conquered death and the grave. He didn't quit before he finished God's plan for him on earth. Instead, he made it possible for us to have new life in him. Today, you're going to learn all about how God can finish every work that he begins in your life. (laughs) Hello, boys and girls. It is I, your favorite illusionist. Presto change! I'm here to boggle your minds, quiver your livers, and leave your breath smelling minty fresh. Now there's nothing up my sleeves and nothing between my ears. But today I'm going to amaze you by teaching you the Powderverse. Today's Powderverse says... And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Philippians 1, 6. Wondrous, amazing, incredible, and other big words. But like I always do in my sold-out shows around the world, well, really in my room while my mom and dad are asleep, I'm going to make some of the words of the power verse disappear with the help of my assistant, Hocus Pocus! <laughs> ho Hokey! Say hi to the nice people! It's Hocus! I'm not Hokey! And I'm not Pokey! It's Hocus Pocus! Now can we just get on with the power verse? Ah, uh, which word should I make disappear? How about this one? And this one! Ha <laughs> yes! Now, Hokey! It's Hocus! Focus! Whatever, man, you're a hand. Come on, I need you and the boys and girls to say the power verse together on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, a three. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Philippians 1, 6. (laughs) Haha, <laughs> that was pretty good. But fasten your seatbelts, Grandma, and observe. Now I'm going to make even more words disappear. How about that one? And this one? Haha, <laughs> now let's see how much you remember. Everyone, stand up and say the power verse with hockey on the count of three. Here we go. One, a two, a three. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Philippians 1, 6. Good job, boys and girls. You may have a seat. And now for my greatest trick of all time. Not really. Whatever. I'm going to make myself 
disappear. This is Presto Changeo saying, now you see me, now you don't. The Pwang Wushibagadabagao What you gotta know? God won't quit until he's through. I am so excited that it's Easter today. It, it reminds me of a time when I was a kid. It was Easter Sunday, and my mom walked in with this giant Easter basket for me. The thing is, it didn't have any eggs or candy in it. No, this Easter basket was unlike any Easter basket I'd ever seen before. Inside, it was filled with, ah, never mind, never mind. Oh, you, you want me to finish the story? Well, of course you do. There's nothing worse than when someone doesn't finish something. Can you imagine if you were trying to cross over a bridge, but when you got to the middle of the bridge, you realized that the person who had started building it did not finish it. That would be a horrible thing. What good is a bridge if they didn't finish it? What would happen if on your birthday, your mom decided that she was gonna buy all the ingredients to make your birthday cake? She mixed them all up, but then did not put it in the oven to cook it. The cake wouldn't be finished, would it? it you, you can't put candles in something like this. It, it's kind of kind of undone, if you ask me. But it, the candles would just fall over and go out, wouldn't they? And, and you certainly wouldn't want to serve this to a guest. For a cake to be of any use, you have to finish cooking it. But when you start something, it's important that you finish it, isn't it? And God understands that. That's why the Bible says in Philippians 1, 6, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. You see, God has big plans for your life. God has big plans for your life. And the Bible says that God has a plan for every human being. He wants to use you to do big things for him. Sometimes things don't go the way that we think they should though. When problems come, it's easy for us to start to feel like maybe God has abandoned us. We begin to think, God, you started an amazing work in my life. It's been great, but it feels like like now you've abandoned me. It feels like you chose not to finish that plan, God. It feels like it's all over. You know, that's probably the way the disciples felt after Jesus died on the cross. You know, they were all sitting together hiding, worried that God had abandoned them and that God's plan for them was all over. But there's something that the disciples learned very, very soon. And that is that even when it looks like it's over, it's not over. When Jesus was in the grave, it sure looked like everything was over. When trouble comes in your life, it can really look like things are all over too. When the boy at school won't leave you alone, it kind of looks like things are over, doesn't it? When, when your mom or dad loses their job, it can really look like everything's over. But the disciples discovered that even when it looks like it's over, it's not over. See, early on Easter Sunday, the stone in front of Jesus' tomb was rolled away by an angel. Out of it stepped Jesus, fully alive and well. Jesus rising from the dead was part of God's plan. He proved once and for all that what God starts, he finishes. It's true for Jesus and the disciples, and it's true for you too. God has big plans for your life. He didn't start those plans just to abandon you and leave you in your time of trouble. What God starts, what God starts, he finishes. It may look like it's over, 
but it's not over until God finishes what he started in your life. Philippians 1.6 says it clearly. It says, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. To you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you're not a quitter. We thank you so much that you have chosen to finish the plans you have for our lives. We thank you that we, you have amazing plans for our lives. And Lord, when we start feeling a little distressed and a little abandoned, Lord, help remind us that we are not we are not going to be finished with your plans until you say we're finished. Lord, that you're not finished with us until you say you're done. Lord, we ask you to help us to remember that you love us, you care about us, and that you will continue to work in our lives until your work is done. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus wants a relationship with you so much that he died on the cross for your sins. He loves you so much but he can't, he cannot have a relationship with someone when they have unforgiven sin in their life. In order for God to forgive us of our sins, something or someone had to be the sacrifice, and Jesus willingly made the decision to be that sacrifice. He took the punishment for our sins. The first step in being forgiven of our sins is to ask Jesus into your heart. All you have to do is pray and tell him that you accept him as your savior, that you believe he died on the cross for your sins, and ask him to forgive you of those sins. You can go to your mom or dad, you can go to a grandparent, you can go to your brother or sister, you can go to anyone and they will happily walk you through the steps of accepting Jesus into your heart. I promise you, it'll be the greatest thing you ever do and it'll be really cool if you did it on Easter. What you gotta know? won't quit until he's through. Rewind! It's time to rewind. Let's go over some questions about what we learned in today's lesson. Question one, what you gotta know today? God helps me, God will give up, or God won't quit until he's through. If you said God won't quit until he's through, you are correct. Question two, how did Jesus die? On a cross, on a boat, or on a donkey? Yes, he died on a cross. Question three, how many days was Jesus in the tomb? One, three, or 40? Three is the correct answer. Question four, did the disciples expect Jesus to die on the cross? Yes or no? No, the disciples did not expect Jesus. Question five, who rolled away the stone from Jesus' tomb? An angel, Jesus, or the disciples? Yes, the angel rolled away the stone. Question six, did Jesus fight back when he was arrested? Yes or no? No, he didn't. Question seven. According to our lesson today, God has no plans for your life, God has boring plans for your life, or God has big plans for your life. The correct answer is big plans. Question eight. According to our lesson today, even when it feels over, it's not over, even when it looks over, it's not over, or even when it sounds over, it's not over. If you said what, even when it looks over, it's not over, you are right. Question nine, according to our lesson today, what God starts, he finishes, what God starts he won't fail, or what God starts is cool. What God starts, he will finish. Last question, where was our power verse found? Psalms 34, 6, Isaiah 6, 11, or Philippians 1, 6? If you said Philippians 1, 6, you are right. So how did you guys do? Did you do your very best? Great job, everyone. What, what you gotta, gotta know? know? 
God won't quit until he's through. All right, it's time for the egg pit. Now, the winner of this game will get to draw the name out of the basket for our virtual winner today. Now, in the in the pit we have we have Madison on one side and we have Addie on the other side, and they are going to try to find all of the eggs that look like that. Okay. All right. So, are you ready? What you're going to do is when you find an egg like that, just toss it out to the back side. Toss it to the back side so we can keep track of the number of eggs that you find. And after 60 seconds, the person who has the most eggs, who's found the most eggs, will be the winner. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? On your mark. Get set. Go! So, Andy, since you're on that side, will you count out how many eggs Maddie's got? Ten? All right, and Andy, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, really? Ten? You have ten again? You tied again? What is this? I night? All right, so when I say go, stand up. Stand up. When I say go, the first one of you to find an egg is the winner. On your mark, get set. On your mark, get set. Go! Got it! I found one! I found one! I found one! I found one! I Riker Junke, Riker, you are the winner. You are the virtual winner. So make sure you let us know you are watching today so that we can send you a $5 Walmart gift card. But remember to let us know, okay? All right, well, great job, guys. What you gonna know? God won't quit until he's through. We are so glad that you chose to be a part of LifePoint Kids today. We hope that you've enjoyed the service and that you've discovered just a little bit more about how much Jesus loves you. Let's pray and ask Jesus to help us with what we've learned today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us this time to learn more about you and the sacrifice that your son made for each of us. We ask that you'll help us to have the great rest of Easter day with our families and friends, that we can just honor you and the way that we act and think this week. We ask that you'll bless us and keep us all. In your name, amen. As we close out, we'll leave you with a shot of the jelly bean jar. Do not forget to send in how many you think are in here. Minus a couple, if I eat a few. Now, happy Easter. We'll see you guys at LifePoint Kids, where you're learning to live for Jesus every day. Come on. Where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Yo, where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Yo, where my peeps at? Come on. Where my peeps at? Where my peeps at? Yo, where my peeps at?